Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. And what we're going to go do today is take a more advanced look at pH, kind of build up to what pH is. Now that we've gone through many, 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 many lessons together, we can tackle it at a much higher level. And so we'll define some terms, and really, again, the, the point is we're going to get to pH. There'll be some other things along the way, but let's focus on that. <clears throat> so we'll continue to uh, progress the dialogue with these two here. Pockets. Uh oh. This was somewhat unexpected. And so <laughs> water is what's called amphoteric, uh, which means it can act as either an acid or a base. Technically, it's amphiprotic, which means that it can gain or lose a proton, but don't worry about that too much. Water can auto-ionize, which means that it can react with itself to form both hydronium, H3O+, and hydroxide. So two waters get together, one of them tosses off a proton to the other one. Now this doesn't happen much. At pH 7, at 25 degrees, you end up with uh, the concentrations being equal at 1 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. So there's not much there. And by the way, if you ever see brackets, brackets around a, an ion indicate concentration. So if you ever see that, that's what that means. So, um, if we take the concentrations together, if we take the concentration of hydronium and multiply it by the concentration of hydroxide, we get something called Kw. And this is the first of many Ks that we are not going to get to <laughs> in these sets of lessons. Uh, but there's Ksp, Ka, Kb. And that's the idea of mainly looking at things in solution. And anything that's aqueous gets, gets its concentration accounted for in the K. Um, and these constants are very important for figuring out when at equilibrium, uh, what are the concentrations of the different things. And so Kw is important because at 25 degrees Celsius, if we take these two concentrations together, 1 times 10 to the negative 7th times 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, we get 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And what that means is to maintain Kw, a constant, uh, as one of those two goes up, the other one has to go down. We have an indirect relationship. I'll, uh, again, concentration and volume, uh, M times V, or, you know, Boyle's Law, uh, pressure and volume. We've seen many indirect relationships before. And so in a neutral solution, these are going to equal each other. In an acidic solution, the hydronium ions are going to dominate. And in a basic solution, the hydroxides are going to dominate. But no matter what, these two together have to equal Kw. So if you have an awful lot of acid in your solution, then hydroxide's got to really uh, drop down so that Kw is going to remain the same thing. All right. And by the way, you will see hydronium and H plus used interchangeably, uh, depending on the author of a textbook. Some people like to have the more official idea that the hydrogen drops, jumps on the water molecule, and other people are happy with just the H plus. I tend to jump back and forth depending on space. For instance, when we talk about molarity, we should really say moles per liter, but for the sake of space, I use the capital M. So given one, we should be able to find the other and then classify it as an acid or base. So go ahead, give this a shot. So, uh, what did you end up doing there? We know that Kw equals hydronium times hydroxide. Uh, they gave us hydronium, and we know Kw, so we can solve for hydroxide. So this is really simple algebra. It's just the numbers are a little bit more complex because you're dealing with um, you're dealing with exponents. I wouldn't worry about the units too much. Also, when you're dealing with k's, um, they get a little goofy. Um, so you can really don't don't really worry about the units working out. And I don't say that very often. <laughs> so anyway, so in this the case, uh, obviously the concentration of hydronium is going to be more than hydroxide. So this is going to be an acidic solution. And we'll tie this into pH later. The same thing happens for the rest of these. Go ahead. All right, welcome back. <laughs> so we're going to solve for, in this case, we're going to solve for hydronium, not hydroxide. And same idea, we're going to end up with uh, just a little bit of hydronium compared to hydroxide, so this is going to be a basic solution. And you can probably tell off the bat right now that this is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, uh, because that has to be that way to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And so this is a neutral solution. But no one ever really talks about acidity um, as the concentration, direct concentration of hydronium ions. We actually talk about it something else. We use the pH scale. So let's get on to that. And by the way, this is... Uh, this might be the greatest uh, chem joke I've ever made. So, duh, <laughs> get it? It's a log scale. <laughs> oh, you math people will get that. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> so log scales are nice. Uh, don't don't get intimidated by a logarithmic scale. All, all a log scale is it's a way to cover a lot of distance. It's it's really the exponent you'd have to raise 10 to to get a certain number. For instance, to get 100, you'd have to raise 10 to the second power. Hence, the log of 100 is 2. That's that's as that's as, as easy as it is. If you had a thousand, then the log uh, of a thousand would be three because you'd have to take ten to the third power, ten times ten times ten. And it even works for tiny numbers. To get uh, point one, you'd have to have ten to the minus one, um, and so then you'd end up with. Uh, the log of 0.1 being negative 1. So what you're seeing here is we're actually covering a gigantic scale with just a little bit of diff, uh, little bit of uh, numeric space. All right. And so what we can do then is, is uh, we can measure things like uh, pH and other things that are kind of cover a giant scale. For instance, uh, 457 is in between 100 and 1,000, so the, uh, the log of that would be between 2 and 3 somewhere between those two orders of magnitude. And if you do the math, it actually ends up being 2.660. And so each raise of a number in the logarithmic scale actually is a pretty big deal. It's, it's an order of magnitude difference. And so little changes in pH are a big deal. Uh, the Richter scale is a uh, log scale. So little changes in earthquake strength is a big deal. I think lumens brightness is a log scale. So you know we have to account for everything from a candle to a sun. So little changes in a log, log scale are important. And if we're dealing with concentration of hydronium and hydroxide, log scales make a lot of sense because we're going to be dealing with uh, a big, big, big range of concentrations. And so we haven't really got to pH yet. And so what pH is, is the negative log of something. That's all P stands for. All right. Um, and we take uh, uh, the negative log of it because remember that most concentrations are going to be tiny. And so instead of having pH being negative numbers, uh, we're going to have it be positive numbers. And so it's just a little fudge factor. <laughs> so uh, here's, here's the big equation that we've been building to the whole time. And that's the idea that pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. And hence, pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide. You don't see pOH very often, but you should know how to calculate that for tests or finals. Um, and that's it. You could take the P of anything. So if you wanted to give someone your phone number and you wanted to make sure that they were of a certain uh, academic quality, you could give them the P of your phone number and see if they could back calculate what your phone number is. Huh? That'd be very clever. And so uh, we're only going to deal with strong acids and, uh, and strong bases right now. So as of right now, you can really take the concentration and then directly correlate that to the concentration of hydronium. That is not the case in weak acids and weak bases. Now, some things are polyprotic, or in the, in the case of sulfuric acid, diprotic. So uh, remember your rules for dissociation, that um, two moles of, of, high, of sulfuric acid would dissociate um, into four moles of hydronium or hydrogen ions. So just keep that in mind when you're dissociating acids, and we'll talk more about that when we get to titration next time. And another interesting note is that when you're dealing with sig figs, it's kind of exciting to have one more sig fig rule, and that's in the log scale, significance actually only starts after the decimal. Um, so when you have 1.0 times 10 to the negative first, uh, that's two sig figs, but in the, in the log scale, uh, that first number is really just getting into the right order of magnitude, and so it'd actually be 1.00. So it's not often you get a new sig fig rule. So I hope you're happy. So let's just kind of wrap up here, um, uh, calculating some pH and pOH values. I'll let you go ahead and get started. Hey, welcome back. Um, so uh, pH is the negative log of hydronium ion concentration. This is a chance to get to know your calculator a bit, a little better. And so remember, that's going to be two sig figs, but that's 4.68 because the sig figs start after the decimal of a log scale. pOH, 9.32. So very, very easy to do, um, but, but you know, you feel like a real chemist when you do this stuff. So again, again taking the negative log of, of the hydronium ions, we end up with 11.92. That's a pretty high pH. And so pOH would be 2.07. And then, of course, if it's neutral, um, it's going to be 7 and 7. So hopefully, um, as a... As, uh, Puzzle Cow, our, our chalk outline of Puzzle Cow points out, uh, if you take pH and pOH, you add them up to 
That's right, 14. Uh, so that's kind of fun. So, you know, uh, usually we deal with pH, the idea of high pH as being basic and low pH as being acidic. But if you flip to the pOH scale, then it's just the opposite. You know, so you have to be careful when you're looking at pOHs. You might just want to convert them back to pH and think of them that way so you don't screw that up. But that's it. That's, that's uh, pH from an advanced point of view. Um, so we are... Uh, very close to wrapping this up. In fact, uh, in this, uh, you know, uh, somewhat abbreviated, I guess, first year of lessons, uh, we only have one lesson left. I'm going to wrap up this initial set of lessons by talking about uh, titrations, uh, which touch on a lot of things that we've talked about. Uh, so our journey together is almost over. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.